Good morning. Ooh, yeah. So I had an interesting week. I'm a keynote speaker, speak for a living. Sometimes I speak for money. I speak all the time. And last week I had four keynotes over 72 hours. And I, I bring a fair amount of juju to my keynotes. And they weren't, some, some spaces, some spaces are amazing to be in, and some spaces are fixer-uppers to be in, and I was in a lot of fixer-uppers, and, and it was just energetically a very demanding week for me. And one of the reasons why I know it was a demanding week for me was because my husband has been out of town for two weeks on business. Last week he was gone, comes back on Friday night, you know, we're both exhausted, he leaves again on Sunday morning and then he was gone again. So, and I'm not used to this. I'm the one that's like, you know, the one that gallivants off <laughs> and he's the one that takes care of all the crap at home. I was the one at home this last two weeks. Daughter, dog, you know, and, and these keynotes that I'm doing and all the stuff that I had to do. So I knew I was already kind of like, <laughs> like this idea. I like it when you're over and helping. So it was, and it's, you know, I'm going through the whole abundancy thing, waiting ever so patiently or not so patiently for life to, to match what I know is in my heart and in my spirit about prosperity. Maybe some of you are going through that too. The green energy. So Thursday night, and, 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 and Gary, bless his heart, sends off the theme of what today's, of what the monthly theme is here at LHSC for the guest speakers, for the resident speakers, and for me if I choose to use it, but I usually never, ever, ever use it. Um, just because I'm not on purpose, it's just you know how the people that have been here before, you know that I just ride whatever wave spirit brings in and that's what I speak about. So I kind of like theme shmeme, who needs it every time I see Gary's email. But, and, but I was, sorry Gary. <laughs> but just that one email, just that one email. All the others I love and honor and appreciate. So I'm, I'm seeing this and it's like, okay, and, and I had to actually remember, oh my gosh, I'm doing my, my presentation on my, my, my program on Sunday. And I saw it said, gracious abundance. I'm sorry, gracious acceptance, gracious acceptance. And I was like, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I went and off did, did these keynotes. And the one on, on one of the evenings was not good. And I had a lot of expectation about how great it was going to be because it was what one would describe as a professional and ideal audience. But it was an ideal audience in a completely less than ideal scenario. Everything that you, as a speaker you don't really want to have, like, I don't know, you know, people drinking massive amounts of alcohol with no food, um, in a restaurant with no space, with no, you know, PA system, with ambient noise of waiters. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's basically your dinner theater for motivational speaking. <laughs> so I get home, and this is now, this is the following Thursday of a two-week time when my husband is gone, and I get home, and I had been bottling it up, you know, and oh, by the way, I had made, I had stayed up and made for weeks hoops, and how, how I make hoops is, this is tubing, you know, like plumbing tubing, and I file down couplings, and I, you know, do three lev levels of tape and a Velcro thing, and they take a while, you know, and I did dozens of them for this engagement that I thought I was going to give these hoops new homes. And there is, they're, they're, they're still with me because they love me so much. They, they need a little more sugar, I guess, from teeter girl before they go off and find new homes, new moms and new dads. So my husband calls me on the way home from this engagement, and all he had to say was, how'd it go? I had, you know, the, the blowout, freak out, tear fest, just victim girl, why, why, why? I said why like 17 times in the conversation. Why do I have to keep doing, you don't understand how hard I've worked my, I've 
I've worked my butt off. I've done all this stuff. I made these hopes. Nobody got it. I went on the deal, right? And he was like, oh my God, I'm sorry I'm not there. But yeah, right. I'm sure you're really sorry you're not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you'd rather not be in San Francisco. You'd rather be here. Uh, so I was just a total small victim girl, anger pig pen, you know? And I hated it. So the next morning I wake up, and by the way, I do this Facebook thing now over the last couple weeks, months, where I write a, an inspirational quote on my professional Facebook page. Instead of going like, here's all the things that I'm doing, you know, I'm actually writing things that I'm going to do to help you. That's like my whole thing of serving. I'm trying to click into service in a better way. So there I am in the morning on Thursday, on the next day, and I'm not feeling very Facebooky. I don't really want to. And I thought, okay, well, you really, you've committed to yourself and to the people that are reading it, you know, do it. So I sit there, and every morning I, I when I do my Facebook post, I sit there and I kind of feel what I'm feeling, really. And, and I go, okay, if I, if the bigger me were here, the bigger me that, that is completely connected to spirit 100% of the time, the bigger me that's unafraid, the bigger me that knows all that's this stuff, what would she say to the little me right now? And then just write that. So I sat into it and I thought, okay, here's what you're going to write to start your day off. Because I knew if I didn't do it that I would hold on to that, that crap all day. Have you ever done that where you've had a moment, you've had your breakdown, you've had your freak out, and you just keep going? You let it go through the rest of your day? And, you, and it just sort of peters out eventually just because you have more stuff to do. You, you, you just, you know, but you still have like a tiny little thread of that victimhood or that sadness or something. It still holds on to you. You just keep getting busy doing other things. So I wrote on that morning on my Facebook pages. I really sank into it, sank into my heart. This is what I wrote. If you experience disappointment, give yourself a little bit of time to be sad. Then, step back up, dust yourself off, and know that everything is happening exactly as it should. That disappointment will become a part of your success story. That's what I told myself. I had to tell myself that. To step back up, dust myself off, and know that everything's happening, happening exactly as it should. And I played a game with spirit that morning. I said, show me how long it will take me to understand that. And so I had yet another engagement to do. <laughs> two hour, two hour finding your mojo. That was interesting. On the way there, I'm like, okay, I gotta find my mojo. <laughs> I gotta find my mojo. Somehow I gotta find my mojo and do it for two hours. So I'm walking in and I'm, I'm kind of keeping that in my, in my orbit, you know what I mean? Keeping that in my heart, in my intention for the day. And I get there to the Ramada Inn in Bloomington by the airport. Hoops, the hoops that I, some got new homes. And I went and I got all my stuff and within five minutes I'm unhooking all my hoops and putting them all together. Christine Day walks up to me, one of our resident speakers here. Teresa, I'm like, what? how does this happen? I only see her here ever. And there she was, she goes, I saw your hoops, I saw your hoops, you know? She comes on over and she gives me this hug and we have this moment, we have this, this tiny little moment of sisterhood and connection and I said, you know, I am feeling a little, I'm feeling a little run down, I'm like a, you know, a pencil that's down to its bare nubbins. So, and here I am gonna go do two keynotes and she says, you know, I know, I, I can feel that, I know that, you know, I'm feeling that in some ways too, and da da da. I don't know if she was or not, just trying to make me feel better. But that's what she said. And I said, okay, great, you know, this is so great and my spirit's lifted and I said, so I'm gonna be in that room. If you hold space for me there, I'll hold space for you there where you're doing your event and all as well. And so that was a little, a little blast of spirit saying, here's a spiritual sister that happens upon where you do your job enough to give you a hug the same day that you've asked for this kind of help, right? 
So I'll, you know, I do the keynote and it was fantastic. It was super fun and everybody loved it. And I woke up some people and got, you know, got people into their power. It was fantastic. And I go and I, you know, go do some hooping and I'm just kind of shaking off all the stuff, <laughs> shaking off all my stuff that I had accumulated. And I get home and I get a call from a client, a pros prospective client, that says, we met, the, the committee met, we loved you, we want to hire you for this day. At your brand new full fee, here you go. Like, it was like a perfect, perfect gig. You know how when some things just go boop, that's how it was. On a Friday afternoon, I was like, yeah! It totally moved, it was just, yay, it's gonna be good to have the money, but also it was like, it took seven hours for Spirit to answer that prayer that I put on Facebook for everybody else to look at and, and enjoy and use. And so I recognized, when I look back on that and I went, what, what, what happened there? How come that magic happened? And I thought, gracious acceptance go back to Gary Parisian's email. What, was it really called gracious acceptance? Gracious acceptance? And I thought, okay, well, you know, when we talk about gracious acceptance, or at least when I talk about gracious acceptance, it's not about being pleasant. I'm going to be very gracious. I'm not a very gracious person, to be perfectly frank with you. I'm just not <laughs> in any way. So... I thought, well, how is it that, that, that I can move into that gracious acceptance? And what I realized is, what is underneath, what is, what is the, the root? Grace. Gracious acceptance is about grace. God, spirit, the universe, the force, goddess, whatever it is that you, grace. And, and I thought, okay, so how, how do I take that and, and extrapolate from that? What's the lesson in that? And I thought, okay, when, you're, when you, you got that gig at 4 o'clock on the phone, not because of anything else, but because you turned it over to grace. You turned it over to spirit and said, do this. Help me with this. Fi help me figure this out. And, and spirit brought that client to me. Now, I, I paved the way by making the phone calls and sending out the paperwork and being fabulous at what I do. I paved the way for that, but how, it, how, how it got, the deal got closed was through spirit. Spirit did it because I asked for it. So I look at it and I go, step back up, dust yourself off, and know that everything is happening exactly as it should. What does that mean? What that means is when stuff is really, really hard for every single one of us, and we get knocked down. Boom, we get knocked down. So many of us stay down. We just stay down. When we go through pain that is extraordinary, we stay down. We let that affect, that wound, that pain, keep us down here in our pool of ick. And so the first step of gracious acceptance, of having spirit accept our, our, our challenge, ex have spirit accept our prayer and do something about it, to have it be the one that's the vehicle of the magic, we, ha we, we, we have to step up. We have to step back up and decide we're not going to be that person. We're not going to stay down all the time. We have to take that inspired action to step back up. And for me, in the morning, it was literally just to step back up and go, stop being such a whiny baby girl. You know? Please, step out of it. That was me stepping back up. Dusting yourself off. Dusting yourself off of when you fall down, and, you've, I've, and I've fallen down many times, physically and every other way, you, you, you get dirt all over you. You get stuff that's not you, right? You get stuff that's not you. And you dust yourself off. You literally dust off the, the stuff that doesn't belong to you anymore. That's what we need to do to move forward in our lives in a state of grace, is we dust ourselves off of the crap 
that we have been holding on to. We dust ourselves off of the, oh, poor me, nobody bought hooves, it was terrible. I pushed that off. I pushed off the stuff that was, you're never gonna get the money, what do you, I dusted that stuff off. The, you, nobody loves you, you can't do it, you're a failure, dust that off. You just push it off, because it's not you. It's not you, it's something you've convinced yourself that is you. Just as you fall down on the ground and you've got pebbles and dirt and grass and all that stuff that I've done down right at Lake Harriet, I dust off, so too can you dust your own crap off by just intending it. And the most important piece, so now you've activated, you've stepped back up into your power, you've decided I'm not gonna be down in that sadness anymore, I'm not gonna be down in that disappointment, I'm not gonna be down in that poverty, I'm not gonna be down in that aloneness or that isolationness, I'm not gonna be down there anymore, I'm gonna step up, I'm gonna dust myself off of all my crap, and sometimes we need help. Sometimes, like yesterday, my husband, dear husband, we're at the grocery store, and he looks at my back, and I've got hair all over my black jacket. He's like, he comes up to me as I'm picking up, I don't know, oranges, I think, and he goes, you're a mess. You are an absolute mess. He dusted me off, because sometimes you don't know what's back there, right? You have no idea what's back there, so you need help to have somebody dust you off. And so if you feel like you need help to have somebody dust you off, get that help. There are professional dust offers. <laughs> there are, there are healers, there are guides, there are teachers, there are facilitators, there are best friends, there are lovers, there are, anybody can help you dust yourself off if you step into that space of trust, right? So you've stepped up, you've dust yourself off, and you have Know that everything is happening exactly as it should. That step is less of an active one and more of a place of presence and surrender. Because you can't actively know something. You can't, you can't go towards knowing something. You know it or you don't know it. I know two plus two is four. I don't know what 2,768 plus 1,458 is. I don't know that. I, you know it or you don't know it. So when you can step into knowing, just knowing, I don't have to do anything about it. I just know that everything is happening exactly as it should. So when I said that prayer at 8 o'clock in the morning, I knew, I knew, I knew when I wrote it that Spirit was going to show me a way to, to absolutely live through what I just said, that I was going to feel better that I was gonna be encouraged, that I was gonna be given the signs from it that it's happening exactly as it should. It was gonna turn my disappointment into a success story. And you guys have the exact same thing. You set, step back up, you dust yourself off, and you know that everything is happening exactly as it should. You just sink into it. Let it be. Let it be. So, I, as I continue to try to be in this place of, of spirit, because that's the key. Honestly, you guys, I feel like there's so many things that we try to make so, so much more complicated than it really needs to be. That somehow I'm more spiritual than you. I'm so not. You should see what kind of a crazy lady I am out there. Just because I'm wearing flowing white doesn't make me, you know, poop out gold. It really doesn't. <laughs> It's just what I wear on the first Sunday of every month because it's my prayer whites. Okay, we all have this. We all have this ability. And so what I have found has helped me, and that's all I'm doing here, is I'm just trying to show you what I've done and whatever you get from it, you get from it. Because that's how I've learned stuff. I've learned stuff by watching cool people do that before me and I watch them. And I've also learned when I've watched yahoos doing something completely ridiculous and go, you've just taught me more than you can possibly know. <laughs> I have been taught so much at Lake Harriet's spiritual community in so many ways about how I want to live. And so part of it is to bring sacredness into every moment. So there I am upstairs right before this, and I'm sitting down at my, my altar, my own altar upstairs, and 
I have you know various prayers that I'm doing for for people, and I have this. I went through this Deepak Chopra 21 Days of Abundance meditation months and months ago, and every day I put. I wrote what like his basic essence of his message was on an index card, and I, I taped them to my wall right above my altar. So when I'm wanting to do my abundance meditations, I, I literally reread each of the 21 that I went through. I went through that 21-day meditation. And I read it, and I feel it, you know, and I, I get back to the resonance of that, that teaching and that resonance of that, uh, that higher level of me. And... So I'm reading them, reading them, reading them, and one of them, one of them just does a little slap, slap, slap. You ever do that where you read something and it's just like, it's just for a millisecond. It just, it's just a little bit, a little bit brighter. Just stays a little bit longer. You do kind of a, one of those deals. One of them did that for me today. And that one said, as I live in present moment awareness, I live the magic of synchro destiny. As I live in present moment awareness, I live in the magic of synchro destiny. So as I read that, I remembered what he said about synchro destiny. And synchro destiny is essentially when you get into that vibration of trust, of presence, let the universe start to do its magic on you. And synchro destiny is not just synchronicity, you know, lining things up for you. You know how things are synchronistic, where they line, blah, blah, blah. I just, oh my God, how does that happen? We all know synchronicity. Synchro destiny is lining stuff up for your destiny, for what you want. Your higher good, your higher power, your place, your purpose. So it, it has the magic of putting all these people and all this right stuff in front of you to lead you into your own destiny. I'm reading that, synchro destiny. Okay, so you just don't, you just stay present, just stay present in, in the experience. Be clear on what you want. And so that was further reinforcement of this, this thing that I did on Friday morning. Then I'm walking around the rest of you. I can hear the 9 a.m. drummers really jamming it at the very end. And I'm feeling them. So I'm like, ooh, this feels good. So I kind of have you know, an echo practice that happens up there. And I'm walking around my office, and I, I say, OK, Spirit, is there any other last messages you want to give me before I go, before I go down there and do my thing? And I see, again, one of these boop, Wait, and I got crap up there you can't even imagine, okay? I mean, seriously, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of weird totem sticks, feathers, uh, whew, you got it, you name it, I got it. And cards and everything, different kinds, D tons of cards. And I see this thing over here. I look, and I pick it up, and it's my Osho Zen Tarot card packet. It's the, one of the first things that I started to use when I was tapping into my intuition, how, how I can use my intuitive abilities to a greater extent. And I would do readings for people and whatnot. So I'm sitting there, and you know, by this time I'm really, I feel it. And I'm holding the cards and I'm shuffling the cards and I'm praying over the cards and saying, okay, what is the, the last kind of thing I need to be aware of today? What is the card that I need to be aware of today to move me more, as fully as possible into alignment with you, spirit? And what is it that they need to hear? What do they need to hear at 1030 that will reinforce it? And so I lay all the cards out after I shuffle, 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 shuffle. I fan them all out, and I close my eyes, and I go like this, and I wait until one of them pulls me down. You, and it's subtle, okay? It's subtle, but you'll feel it when you start to practice these kinds of things. And it was like, boop, this is it, this is it. And you pull it out through and you flip it on over. This was the card. It was called, it is called, Going with the Flow. Going with the Flow. It's an ace of water, which is in, in Osho Zen Tarot, but it's the cups, the receptivity, the feminine, okay? Going with the Flow. And here is the way that it's described. 
It's this guy floating in the water on a current. It's awesome. Here's what it says. Now, I just want to repeat to you before we get, before I read the commentary on what this card does. I said, step back up, dust yourself off, and know that everything is happening exactly as it should. That's what I put on Facebook on Friday. The figure in this card is completely relaxed and at ease in the water, letting it take him where it will. He has mastered the art of being passive and receptive without being dull or sleepy. He is just available to the currents of life, with never a thought of saying, I don't like that, or I prefer to go the other way. Every moment in life, we have a choice, whether to enter life's waters and float, or to try to swim upstream. When this card appears in a reading, it is an indication that you are able to float now, trusting that life will support you in your relaxation and take you exactly where it wants you to go. Allow this feeling of trust and relaxation to grow more and more. Are you ready for the last one? Everything is happening exactly as it should. Everything is happening exactly as it should. I almost fell over, fell over my Zafu pillow. When I said, read, everything is happening exactly as it should. Everything is happening exactly as it should. Synchro destiny. I'm getting reminded. And you're getting reminded all the time of what you have been asked to do and what you can do to be supported by spirit. To be in gracious acceptance. And I wanted to bring up something about grief. Because I wanted to dedicate this practice to the peaceful transition of David Shaw's mother, Marlis Summers, our president of the Coordinating Council. He, his mother is in her final physical realm and will be transitioning to the spirit world soon. And I wanted to dedicate this practice to her. And I, as I was feeling her upstairs, Marlis, I recognized that her gracious acceptance is really about letting spirit accept her completely as she drops her body to just have her move into that state of absolute release, knowing that everything is happening exactly as it should. And I thought about Dave, and I remembered the feeling of grief when my mom passed in 2006. Grief is, is, it, it, grief is a sadness that's so intense that they have a, its own word. Its own word, grief. And we, what we do with grief is we mourn the loss of someone or something. We mourn the loss of someone or something. And it's that loss that keeps us in that profound pain. And what I went through with my mom was a conscious, sacred process. Death can be a conscious, sacred process. Death of anything. Death of, of a loved one. Death of a, a relationship. Death of the way that you used to walk in this world. The loss of anything, or perceived loss of anything, can be done in a sacred way. That's what God wants, in my humble opinion. That's what it's there for, is to allow you to be present in that experience while feeling so much sadness, but to, in this, at the same time, be, on that play, be in that place of, of, of divinity, of beauty, really, of beauty. And I remember when my mom was dying, she, as she took her last breaths, 
I think the people who leave, they know, they, they decide when they want to leave. And my mom, I was her primary caregiver, as my, was my best friend Jean. And I could tell that it was coming to a close. And she and I were talking a lot about where she goes and what's going to happen, and she was completely unafraid. And I was getting more tired and more tired and more tired. And I remember a couple of days, like two days before she died, I had the saddest moment, the saddest moment was when I was lifting her in the bathroom. I was carrying her in the bathroom. And I could see I had not gotten any sleep, none. I was operating on cigarettes and coffee. And I'm holding my mother, my naked mother, and I'm seeing the reflection of two women I didn't recognize. I didn't recognize. And it was so profound. That's when it hit me that she was going, that she was going to be gone. And I was so tired. I was so bone to just so tired. And it was the night of the 28th of November. And I needed some sleep. And so my mom, or you know, I had said, Mom, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to Jean's house for a couple hours and take a nap. I just need to take a nap. And I said, I love you, Ma. And she says, I love you, honey. And I go. And I go to sleep, or pretend to go to sleep. I lay there. And at this time, there are other people in the house, and you know, pe some people I barely know, and you know, family members and things. And I'm laying there, and I'm so tired. I just want to just absolutely collapse into the bed. And yet, spirit wouldn't let me go to sleep. Spirit was just like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and it started to talk to me about things that were what I was going to write about in my next column in the New Age magazine, like The Edge. It wasn't The Edge, but it was like The Edge. And it started to tell me what my <laughs> article was going to be. And I'm like, are you, f are you kidding me? Really? Now? No. Need to go to sleep. And it was like, no, you're going to stay awake. So I get up and I'm like, I can't, f I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay. So I go over to my mom's and, and they're all, everybody's worried about me. Everybody's like, what, what are you doing here? You should be down, like laying down. We're afraid. I said, I don't know. I've got this thing. I've got this article that I'm going to write. And this guy who I barely know is a friend of my brother says, what article? I said, I write this article for blah, blah, blah. So for the next 45 minutes or so, I, I'm about as small as I can be, okay, energetically. So tired, so wiped out. And as I started talking about stuff like you know, creating your own reality and being in a place of empowerment, being in alignment with spirit, having the energy, you know, there's energy around us that isn't just physical, there's mental, emotional, spiritual energy, you can work with it, you can use it, it's, you're, you're so much bigger than you actually are. I start talking about that, well, I actually start, you know, being that. I'm like, and then the other thing that you'll notice when you start, so that's what I ended up doing is kind of having my own little service in my mother's living room to this stranger, kind of giving spirit 101 to a guy who doesn't understand any, any of it. And I'm going, and this, and this, and this. And I said, and said, when you realize that you are in full alignment, you're complete alignment with spirit, with source, when you have that bubbling inside of you, radiating through you, and it's you, you realize that you can handle anything in your life. There is nothing that, you can come, that can come in front of you that you can't handle, including the thing that's happening in that room right now. That thing that's happening in that room right now, when I step into that place of power, when I step into that place of knowingness and integration with spirit, then I know that everything that's going to happen in that room, I can handle. And my best friend comes out of my mom's bedroom and says, come here, it's time. And I walked in, of course, I'm like <laughs> I walk in and I saw, I got to see that last moment with the smile that was on my mom's face. And I could feel the temperature drop in the room 15 degrees. And I could feel prickles all over my body. 
and I could feel the presence of angels accompanying her. And I dropped down and held her, and I wailed, I wailed, I wailed like an Italian grandmother, I wailed. And while I was wailing, I was wailing, yes, you did it, Ma, you did it, you did it exactly like you said you were gonna do it, you, you, you did it, you did it, you did it, you don't have any more pain anymore, you don't have any, any of that stuff you had to go through. I had this whole big thing that I did. You did it, you did it, you did it, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God, thank you. For giving that moment to my mother. And my brother, he freaked out completely. He was on the phone to all the other family going, I don't know what's happening with T, she's lost it. She's completely lost it. He was more worried about me. And what I know to be true in those places of grief is that yes, it's so painful, it's like, ah! But it also is where we can accept grace. We can accept Spirit's presence in our loved one's life and in our life. And that there is no losing it. Like my who, my who is all dressed up. She's got black glitter and white vinyl and, I'm sorry, silver glitter, black, white vinyl and black gaffer tape. And she's falling apart, okay? Like many of us, we're falling apart. You know, we still get the job done, but you know, not quite as sparkly as we used to be. Now, if I took this process and I took off all of this tape, I took off all of her outsides, would my hoop go away? Would it be gone? Would it disappear? Would I lose it? Would I lose my hoop if I, if I took her tape off? No. She'd just be kind of her full essence. Because what she really is, is three-quarter inch PVC tubing, 160 PSI. That's what she's made of. That's what she's made of. This, this stuff, this sparkly stuff, that's just the stuff that makes her kind of more fun and makes her, ma makes her a hoop, you know, makes her a hoop and makes her give joy and give love and, and all that stuff. But if I took her tape off, she'd still be a hoop. She's just in a different form. And I might, I might grieve, grieve the loss of it but it's still there. And the people that we've lost, we haven't lost at all. They're just in a different format. They're in a very, very powerful format. Trust me. My mother, she's alive and well in the spirit world. And she makes herself known all the time. So Dave, when you and your family go through this transition, I hope for you that you can make it as sacred and as beautiful and as transformative as it deserves to be. And I will pray for you and your family. And for the rest of you, as you're moving through disappointment, sadness, grief, loss of any kind, know that if you just step up if you just don't cower and you dust yourself off of all of the ick and you know that everything is happening exactly as it should, then you're going to find your way out. I guarantee it. So let's do a little meditation to really firm this into our, our selves. Get comfortable. Close your eyes and feel your feet on the ground. Feel your bottom on the chair. And just 
really go beyond your skin. Don't, don't think about what your skin feels like or don't, feel, don't think about what your muscles feel like or even what your bones feel like. Tap into that strand of energy that is deep within all of that, your spirit, your soul, your essence, who you really, really are. And imagine that it's just this gold, beautiful light, just sparkling, radiant, never ending, never dying, never dulling, never disappearing. That full essence of you that was you before you were you and that will be you after you're done. Breathe in and allow your body to just relax. Just imagine that you're just dusting off all of the stuff that's made you feel tired or cranky or afraid or anything at all that's not been your ideal you. Just brush it all off. Just imagine that it's just getting whisked away. Breathe in and allow the energy to travel down through your legs, that, that piece of you, that essence of you, that gold strand of you. Let it travel down through your legs and through the base of your pelvis, down through this floor and through this foundation of this beautiful, beautiful space. And imagine that it just travels down deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, 10 miles under you, 100 miles under you, 1,000 miles under you. And you can feel all the different layers of the earth how complex and complicated she is. She's so much more than what we see on her surface. Sending that energy down, deep down, and wrap it around the core of the planet, the iron core heart of Mother Earth. With your next breath, imagine that that same strand goes out the top of your head, through the dome of this building, through the atmosphere, through the cosmos, passing deep space, all those spaces going deeper, 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 deeper into the heart of the creator. That perfect place, that perfect presence. Feel yourself being suspended almost in midair between creator and mother earth through your spine. And in this place, I invite you to look at the one thing that you've been working through, disappointment, sadness, grief, fear, whatever it is. See that one thing. And just imagine that as you see that and experience that, that that no longer stays dark. It no longer is haunting you. It is no longer a burden that you are carrying, but it is rather just a part of your journey. In this place of integration, imagine that spirit is just gonna rain down on you from the top of your head all the way down raining down all on you, all that part of you that fears what's happening and that is resisting what's happening. Let it just melt off of you, flow like water, flow like water. And you get yourself up, you stand up into your power, you stand up into your truth. You are not alone in this process. Spirit is in you, within you, around you. Everything that is happening is happening through, to, and from grace. And just sink into your heart that epicenter of grace and know that everything is happening exactly as it should. Everything is happening exactly as it should. Mm. 
Let that peace envelop you. Let it radiate out of you as you walk your journey. Know that spirit is with you. You can move into gracious acceptance. Blessings and have a wonderful day!